Hello everyone, welcome to this new exciting thing that I'm trying to do. We are going to be doing a um, chap volumes of manga. I like to read manga instead of watch anime. So we're going to be doing like volumes of manga, like discussion review sort of thing. I'm not really going to be giving like a number review until I finish the whole thing, or at least a, a, a decent amount of it. Um, but I'm just going to be, I've read, I've already read the manga and I'm going to be giving my opinions on it, talking about things about it. My, t I'm doing this live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash rustage underscore. And you can see them talk about it as well with me. Um, the, this is the first one, which is Jujutsu Kaisen. The anime has just come out for this. So I decided it'd be a good idea for me to start reading it. Uh, so I bought the first volume and see, here's my proof of my physical manga. It's just like the image, but in real life. Um, and I read through it and we have some thoughts and opinions. Um, I know a lot of people have been watching the anime and I wonder what the differences are. I imagine that fight scene wise, it's a lot, you know, more animated, <laughs> so a lot easier to follow. But we are gonna start with just the my, my general thoughts on it, which is I, I like it so far, but it is very much generic shonen start for me. I always have a problem. I don't have a problem. It takes me a few volumes to get into a shonen because almost all shonen starts really similarly where you and because they've got to set everything up. They've got to set things up and stuff. And I felt like, whoa, let me show that doesn't happen. I felt like this is an interesting mix of like Bleach and Blue Exorcist, if that makes sense. Um, it's set, what well, it's set in real life, kind of right. It, it's you have kind of with these shonen things. It's either set in a fantasy world like Naruto is or One Piece is, um, or it's set in something that's close to real life, but with something that makes it different, like My Hero Academia or Bleachers, right? And this is more in that camp. And I am actually more of a fan of a fantasy world because then you can have interesting world building it's you get to learn more about the world and uh i like that um but that doesn't mean it's it's bad at all i'm just saying that's my preference in comparison um i had i wrote down some notes when i was doing this one thing i immediately wanted to know about in comparison to the manga to the anime is a lot of the characters in this they will say something like a speech bubble but then they will have something that's not in a speech bubble next to them, like a funny little quip. And I'm not sure how that's handled in the anime. Because um, it's it's kind of like a something they say underneath their breath or like a thought or something. But it's... I think it really adds to the humor of the of the thing. Um, and there's there's just a couple of funny little quips that I really like. The, the humor is pretty decent in this, actually. And I like the main character. Uh... I do apologize. It takes me a few volumes to be able to understand and remember character names. And that's just because I'm a stupid white guy who can't understand Japan, who can't like, <laughs> I see like a bunch of Japanese names and I'm like, uh, I don't know which is which, right? They, they will say like, so there are, there are parts in this manga where they'll be like, blah -de blah is this. And I'm like, who? <laughs> and I've got to go through it. I'd be like, oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> right. So the story starts off with the main character, who I can't remember his name, um, Ito Itadori, something like that. And he's just a high school guy, and he is in the he's a he's a part of the occult club, which is cool. Um, so you immediately know that this story is going to be revolving around occult in some way. You rarely have the main character be part of an occult club if occult isn't included in the story, right? Haruhi Suzumiya, there's a bunch of other stuff like that, right? Um, and so you immediately know that it's like, oh, this is, this is a demon thing. There's demon things in this. Uh, I quite like his classmates. It's a shame that you don't really see a lot of them. I'm sure you'll see more of them later. I hope they play a bigger role because I like the glasses girl quite a lot and the, and the big guy. I think they're quite funny. Again, I don't remember their names. Um, and you also get introduced to the to the black haired character, Megumi, which is interesting because the only other Megumi I know is a is a woman. I assume that's a, a last name then. Um, who is I feel like they're gonna have that sort of 
I wouldn't say like rival um, cr- cr- um, chemistry because they obviously not rivals, but just like one's cool and sh- he's like the straight man. And then the main character is a bit more goofy anime protagonist. So they would play off each other in that sort of way. Like Sasuke and Naruto are, but like not as rivals, you know, like Mike Guy Kakashi. Yeah, that sort of thing. You always have that. Um, and it's pretty. So the main crux of the story is that there's like this, there's a bunch of demons and they're in, they're doing naughty things, right? And they're killing people. It's not good. Shit's fucked, right? Um, and the main character has this evil artifact. Well, his his class has the evil artifact. And they open it, and now they're being buggered by some demons. And he's like, I've got to save them because I'm a shonen protagonist. And also, his grandpa just died, which I think is pretty important. I like how they handled the grandpa death. Because it kind of made fun of, like, dramatic deaths. Because the grandpa was kind of just there. And he's like, uh, please, before I die. And the, and the, the main character was like, stop trying to act so dramatic, dude. Just chill out. And then he just fucking dies. And he's like, oh, okay, I guess he actually dies. <laughs> um, and I think it was handled quite well. Because you did see that he was the only one around his granddad. And his granddad's like... So he has this kind of motivation of when he dies... He doesn't want to be alone when he dies. He wants to have people that he cares about and stuff. And it's kind of a funny play on the trope of the dead relative. But it, I think it's really effective for this character. Uh, I like his design as well. It's pretty simple. You can see on here, he's not too complicated of a design, but he is distinct enough to be recognizable. I like the sort of hairstyle and things. You 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 kind of go into the problem with some shonen protagonists where they look wacky right? Like Senku does or something. Um, and it's because they're trying to make them look unique. Um, th- who is it? The the guy who writes Naruto, his brother tried to do a manga and the main character of that just, it looks terrible in my opinion. But, you know, he, this guy has like, like Ichigo Kurosaki vibes in terms of his design. And I quite like that. Kishimoto's brother. Yeah. Uh, this guy has Ichigo Kurosaki vibes and I kind, I quite like that. Um, but he's like, He's not a reactionary character. I just mentioned his design. Um, he is unex- inexplicably strong. And I hope that there's some sort of explanation for that. I imagine there is, right? There's some explanation into why this guy is so just naturally strong. Because obviously that's a that's a big plot point of the thing. Um, I kind of... I am quite a, more of a fan of underdog stories where a character starts weak and grows stronger... You know, like Deku. Deku's not handled that well, but like, it's part of the reason why I like Kobe from One Piece, that sort of thing. And characters just being naturally gifted at something. I'm not a huge fan of, but it can be done well. Um, I just hope there's some sort of explanation to why he can just throw a, what is it, like a, the shot put ball, and it just goes, whoo! Um, I like that he's humble, um... And, uh, yeah, obviously, if you know the reason why he's really strong, don't tell me. Uh, anyway, what happens next is they fight these demons and they retrieve the artifact, which is apparently a finger of this, like, evil demon king. And the my dude just fucking eats it. <laughs> my dude just fucking eats it because he's like, well, I if I... Um, if I can't fight this thing because I don't have any curse energy. Again, I'm not entirely sure how the whole curse energy things work. It might, it's going to take me a few volumes for me to wrap around the concept of it. And he's like, if I can't fight it with my regular human energy, I'm going to eat this finger and get curse energy. And then we, we go into another trope, which is quite common in Shonen. And I really hope that they do it well in this because I always am just like, hmm. The trope is is when you have a character who is good, but he's got like an evil manifestation inside of him, right? So it's like Ichigo with his hollow form. It's like Naruto with his nine-tailed demon fox. Um, Those are like two quite popular examples, but that trope is pretty prevalent in Shonen because it adds really easy conflict and also it adds really easy ways to power up the character because the evil thing inside of them has power. So you kind of have to balance, oh, do I want more power? Um, but I lose a bit of my humanity or do I want to keep my humanity uh, and 
sacrifice not being as strong, right? You have that sort of uh, dichotomy going on there. I hope that's the right word. And it can be effective, but I, I've just seen it so much and I just feel like I need uh, something different, which it hasn't been demonstrated yet, just something a little different for it to be more interesting. I, I will say, I guess it is a little bit different because later on you'll notice that they, they've they kind of given the demon form like a sense of humor, like when he's talking on the hand and stuff. And there's like a bit of like, I do like how the main character isn't like burdened by it. He's not like, I now have this demon inside of me. I don't know how to control it. He's just kind of like, fuck it. He's like a little demon. Shut the fuck up, demon. <laughs> and I, I like that. That's kind of quirky. And I like that. I do like his character. I will say that, like, he immediately has quite an interesting character about him. Again, he shows a lot of the same shonen things. Uh, there's that stereotypical scene where you have an older character when he's enrolling at the academy being like, why do you do this? And he has to be like, because of this reason, and he's deemed worthy. That happens all the time in shonen, and I get that. Like, I can't really criticize it for falling into shonen tropes. You have the cooler teacher character who's who's strong, but he's like laid back, the blindfolded guy, he's like Kakashi, right? Or um, what's his name from Blue Exorcist? I can't remember. Or the, the Kane guy from uh, Bleach. Like you have that cooler mental character. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Um, I, speaking of that trope where it's like evil person and not evil person, I think the anime that does it best is Greed from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So if, if they go along that sort of route, I think it will be effective. I think it will be effective. Um, anyway, he gets, he eats the finger and he becomes a vessel for this demon. And they're going to execute him so they can kill that part of the demon, the great demon lord. But then they're like, hold up, hold up. If he can eat this finger and it does, and he can control it, why doesn't he just eat all the fingers and then we can kill them all at once and we don't have to find multiple vessels? It's like a big brain idea. And the main character goes along with it because even though he knows he's going to die at the end of it, he's going to die anyway, but even though he knows he's going to die at the end of it, he knows that this way he can help people and he wants to be able to help people. Um, he, he's strong and he, he that, that little quote keeps popping up from his grandma, which I think is good. It's good motivation. It also is, um, it's a, it's becomes like a search quest sort of manga, like a MacGuffin kind of gathering pieces of a thing, which means they can really, the, the author has so much freedom to be able to be like, if he wants the characters to go to a location, he, all he needs to do is put a finger there and they can just go there. It's, it's really easy it, it, for him to be able to control the story like that. And I think, I think that's great. It's like Dragon Ball <laughs> in the original Dragon Ball. Um, he goes to the school to to learn how to do stuff. There's only three other people in his year. And I like that, actually. When they said there was only two other people in his, in his year group, I was like, thank fucking Christ. I do not want to learn like the names of like 20 characters in a classroom or something. Like... It, it's cool when it's done well. I actually think it's done well in My Hero, but sometimes it's just a little bit much. I want like, you know, a small cast of concise characters that we can really learn about these characters and people get an, a nice share of screen time. And the fact there's only three of them, I'm like, that's great. Thank you. And I can't, again, I can't remember her name, but the woman character, the female character that comes in, I really like her. I was worried when I first saw her. I was like, okay. How is he, how's this author going to handle female characters? I think she's, I really like her abilities. They're really interesting to me. She, she demonstrated like a, like a nail ability and like this voodoo doll ability, which was, which was cool. I liked, um, that we know a little bit about her character and she's a, a little bit like she envies like the city. She's a bit materialistic, but she has this kind of rural upbringing that kind of like shapes the way like that she acts and such. And and she doesn't seem like she really wants to do things to save people's lives. But I think that's more of an act because you do see that she kind of gives up. They they purposely went out of their way to show up, show that she is um, cares about the lives of others because she um, was going to give up so that the child would survive. Um, and I think that's good. I think she, Nobaru, Nobaru, 
Nobara, so far, she's a pretty good character. We will find out. You'll, you'll see in my uh, Fire Force review where I talk about some female characters that, that I, I don't think are pretty good so far. <laughs> so she was good. I liked her so far, and I kind of like her design. I need to look up an image of her, because I don't know what color her hair is, but they said in the manga that it's dyed. I imagine it's pink. Um, I I imagine it's it's not pink. It's, it's like ginger. Okay, cool. It, they said it's dyed in the manga, so I was like, it must be unnatural, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, she's cool. She's cool. Um, and... I did want to say, point out, just in general, I think the art is really good. It's it's really, like, dynamic. Um, it reminds me a little bit of a mixture between Bleach and Haikyuu. Like, the characters have this kind of, like, squareness about them, like Haikyuu does. Like, their hands look like Haikyuu hands. Um, but it, they're really expressive. I really like the way the artist draws the characters. And it's clean as well. The combat is so easy to follow what's going along. Like... It's really clean, and it knows when to have backgrounds and when not to have backgrounds, and um, it was just really easy to read, and I have to respect that, because some manga's not easy to read. Things like Seven Deadly Sins, I, I just, Demon Slayer, I just couldn't really pass it as well, but this was really well done, and they properly made the, uh, the evil creatures look quite intimidating and they even had that one scene where there's like a school child or whatever delinquent and he's like been ripped apart and it's really jarring compared to the rest of it and it really is effective it's effective and i'm sure the animation in the anime is great but the manga is so far uh it, it's well paced out um again it's like generic shonen stuff, so there's nothing so far that has got me being like oh i've got to read the next one but i'm sure that will happen in the next like four or five volumes. Um, the the sort of end of it is quite interesting where they're up against a strong fellow. Again, this is another trope where like you have the main characters of a shonen go up against someone who's really, really strong. So you can kind of showcase the power difference and you have to showcase how they get around that without just being stronger than them. Um, and again, you see a lot of really interesting abilities. There's some really good pages. This one in particular is a really good page. Um, right near the end. And then at the very, very end, that the cliffhanger that they leave it on. One thing I like about volumes of manga is they really try to make sure they have a good thing to end it on. And all three of these volumes do a good thing to end it on so that you can want to read the next one. And they end it on with all of the humans getting out so that the main character can let the evil demon king free to go to town. And I assume in volume two, we're going to see what this evil demon king is going to do. Um, the world building is interesting so far. There's some things I don't fully understand. Um, and I will have to keep reading to find out. I think it was a pretty solid start. Um, it's not like the greatest start ever. It, it is kind of littered with like things that I've seen before. Uh, but otherwise... I quite enjoyed it, and it did make me interested to to read the second volume. Uh, this is my first time ever doing something like this, so I don't know if my thoughts have been already scattered and terrible. Um, and this might be a terrible video, but overall, I'm I'm gonna say pretty good, pretty good so far. Uh, I think how good this volume kind of hinges on how good the rest of it becomes because again it has you know like a lot of other shown in a lot of really it, it reminded me of the start of blue exorcist and the start of bleach right it's not that dissimilar to the start of bleach or the start of blue exorcist um i think it's pretty good so far i think the anime is probably great uh and if you guys want me to continue talking about the volumes let me know and i, I will keep doing it um I don't know if I have any extra thoughts about it. Uh, I think the characters are good so far. It seems great. It seems good. There you go. There you go. I hope that was not a terrible discussion of the manga. Um, do, does anyone in chat have anything that they want to add about like the first volume specifically? Like anything that I might have missed, just anything interesting? Um, 
I'll get to any questions that aren't related to it after the stream. After the recording, I mean. I'd give the series to chapter 9 to see if you're hooked or not. That's true. So there's a lot of things in manga where it's like you you need to get to a certain chapter before it hooks you. And like in One Piece, it's like Arlong Park, right? So I think the pacing's fine. The author has a hand fetish. <laughs> um, the initial takeover was good. I, I did like how he could just kind of controlled it relatively easily. You got a good taste of what the demon looked like. I mean, my only thing I was thinking about at the time of the initial takeover was, oh, it's one of those stories, <laughs> which I already explained beforehand. Um, anyway. Cool. What do I think of Gojo? Uh, Gojo is the teacher, right? Or is he... No, or he... Pff, again, character names. Is Gojo the teacher or is he the black-haired guy? He's the teacher. Okay. I said he's like Kakashi. He's like... He's the cool but quirky. He does... You know, he bought the souvenirs. He's supposed to be like this really strong character, but he has like these funny quirks about him as well. Like, I get... I get his character. Um... I like him because I like that archetype, but so far he hasn't done anything to make me be like, to separate him from those other characters in the same archetype. Um, team dynamic seems good so far. I like it straight man and kind of like two funny characters. Um, I think it's good. I think it's good. It, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely got off to a pretty decent start. It set up everything well and it, it got through that pretty fast. So now we're into like the kind of meat of it. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Anyway, uh, this is probably where I'll wrap up the video. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. If you want me to continue doing this, uh, let me know and I'll continue. I'll, I'll talk about the second and third volume, etc. If you have any other serious suggestions, let me know. I hope this wasn't too scattered and rambly. I'm, I haven't written a script for this. I just wanted to do like a casual discussion of my thoughts about a manga. Um, if you want like detailed analysis about anime and manga i really am not the channel for you i do not have the time for that <laughs> but i appreciate you watching anyway i've streamed these on twitch twitch.tv forward slash rustage underscore thank you to everyone in the chat for uh, watching and talking and with me and such and uh, i will see you guys next time crew dismissed